might end up having to park up on the road driving the tour v down to like down like even past it maybe so she's a keeper do we leave this bushes here or get them out why don't you just get them out let's do it then There's one calling up on the limb right there. <laughs> Looks like a baby. Got a little squad in there. You're gonna leave that little bush, right? Yeah. I feel like it's not a good tree to cut down either. Mulberries? Owen or something just comes in here with just a big brush hog and it's, he's, he's been out of here for two hours. Someday, Owen. Someday. I think five sticks would put you... There ain't no sticks happening on that thing. No, well I know, but like... The equivalent? Yeah. How tall do you think it is to that big branch? Not this if one. the platform was at the base of that branch, that's up there. Honestly, with access like that, you can almost hunt it in the morning. Them coming back from the, you know how they were late season? I mean, I'm, I'm not saying hunt it late season in the morning, but you could sneak right up here and just wait for them to come back. Get in early? Yeah. Well guys, today is July the 10th and Grant and I are out this morning prepping our first food plot. Uh, for this upcoming fall. Uh, this is a farm that's new to us as of middle of October last year. You guys saw several hunts uh, we had out here. Grant encountered a really awesome deer that unfortunately was on the wrong side of the fence. I had the Snortwees encounter about 300 yards from where we're sitting right now. Um, we noticed just when we picked the farm up that there's first of all a ton of deer uh, in this little concentrated area but also a lot of really good uh, deer, really solid age class, a lot of really good genetics. Uh, so it's a farm we recognized pretty early that this coming year we wanted to really focus on, do whatever we could to improve it. Um, so going forward, we're really excited about this plot right here. Uh, like I said, it holds a lot of deer. There's a lot of deer, at least in the area around here. But what's pretty unique and, and neat about this place is it has a little bit of everything to hold the deer early uh, in the summer through uh, the early season, middle of season, and then it also seems to have a ton of deer throughout the late season. Grant had a couple of awesome times this past January or so mm -hmm. that yep. he got out and uh, sat with the long lens and got some footage when they were all kind of grouped up. So we're super excited about this spot right here in this farm. Yeah, so the first thing we noticed about this farm is there's not a lot to work with at all. Um, really, we just have two little draws, one being the one we're in right now and then it kind of runs up to the ag fields uh, to the east. And then we have another one to the north that kind of runs into an alfalfa field. So th those two draws are really gonna be our focus for this farm. And the first thing that we notice about this draw right here is this little area that we can put this plot in. Obviously we're limited with this farm on where we can put food. So anywhere we can, we're gonna try to. This is like a little, probably what, quarter acre plot? Yeah. Um, that we're gonna try to sneak in here and we have an awesome tree right here behind us that we're gonna hang in, but probably out of all of our permission farms, this is probably the most I'm excited about this farm right here, just because the age structure uh, with the deer that we have here, um, like Max said, the encounters, and he talked a little bit about the late season footage that I got. They all seem to come out of this block of timber and hug this draw. So I yep. think it's gonna be a perfect little intersection spot right here to, uh, catch up with one of these bucks, especially in daylight. I mean, we had some solid bucks using this draw as well in the daylight. So I'm really excited about this plot. I'm ready to get the seed in the ground. Yeah, we came into this spot and as Grant kind of mentioned, we don't really have a lot to work with. And unfortunately we don't have any rights to any of the tillable. The farmer is generous enough already to let us hunt here. Uh, and he actually gave us the go ahead to do whatever we can with the stuff that he doesn't have tilled and planted right now. So this was 
a spot that stuck out to us and all we did was pretty simple it's kind of one of those poor man plot uh, style mornings here where it just takes a little bit of sweat and elbow grease we came in here with the electric saw uh, knocked out a, probably a dozen or maybe dozen or 20 trees unfortunately just like always they're all locusts so we're stuck up pretty good um, but we were able to clear out what's at least going to be a quarter acre and if we do decide to kind of run it up into this little draw a little bit we can probably squeak out a little more so pretty simple kind of typical for Grant and I's strategy is take these little coves of these ag fields or these little drainages whatever we can try to plant and all I think it does in my head at least it instills a lot of confidence that when you have all this big ag uh, pretty soon it's going to be cut beans when it gets right I'm just going to have this little cove something for these deer to key in on looking at an 80 acre field you know there's at least something we left a perfect little scrape tree that's a 25 to 30 yard bow shot from the tree and all I think it's going to do like Grant said it's in between bedding and a destination feed which seems to be the strategy and the key for success so like I said we cut the trees out and drug them out of the way got them into the ditch here which is another awesome bonus to this spot here is that we can hunt anything uh, with the north wind and if we need to if there's deer that obviously are going to pile into this bean field and even in the plot we can hop right out of the tree almost straight into the ditch out to the road and we're out of here ideally undetected so we're going to spray it here in a little bit give it probably two weeks come back we're going to do a little burn you know those summer burns are very easy on us you know we don't I don't really like to mess with those spring burns as they can get out of hand. So coming in here, you know, in the summer where you got green stuff to stop it on all sides, I'll come in here and I'll set the torch to it and burn it off. I'll have a perfect little seed bed, uh, get some seed on the ground, and hopefully, you know, by early October, I've got a nice little stand and hopefully some good deer hitting the scrape tree right here. So we're going to get it sprayed, um, do a couple of little things this morning, and uh, we'll see you guys back hopefully with an update in a couple weeks here. So is this where it would start? Yeah, I was originally just thinking this little pocket, that there, and then just up along the along the hill, but. If it were me, I'd try to make it a little bigger. Because really, if you're thinking that pocket and this pocket and up the hill a little bit, what are you looking at? Not even an eighth of an acre? Yeah. Probably less than that. I mean, I think if you got, even if you got to a quarter acre, I think that'd be a, a solid size we can we can walk it off on onyx and measure it yeah ideally i was thinking obviously it's too late now but do some sort of plot screen all the way along this how deep is this creek walkable at least oh yeah so if you were to just walk straight across here and pop into a blind right here would you be worried about the deer being bedded in a spot where they'd watch you yeah so i kind of walked it back in march when i first moved in there's a good amount of like ground level cover it's bigger timber up here but there's a good amount of ground level cover for them to bed in and stuff there's lots of thicker thicker areas back here where they definitely bed in then there's up in the draw further you know there's a couple little pockets it's essentially just little pockets so what about walking what if you were to go all the way down yeah to that fence or wherever just just out of sight of this and then drop into the creek That's and then come in. exactly what I was thinking. There's kind of a ditch over there. You can see where the brush's a little taller. Just goes straight into this creek. And yeah. then, yeah, I mean, might have to go into the culvert, but yeah. I think staying in the ditch is by far going to be the safest bet. Because if you went this way, would you be spooking deer? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Especially when the corn's in, but. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's measure it out. Let's see what it would be if we were to draw it all the way across yeah. there. What's it look like? 0.38. So you could potentially stretch it to half if you did the whole area. Essentially, yeah. But honestly, if he's good with it, I don't know why you wouldn't. Yeah. I mean, it'd be really good if you sprayed and then dissed and then let it Grow and mm -hmm. then spray again before you seed. Mm. You get one extra Second. spray in there to, to kill before you seed. Yeah. 
basically just get a better kill. Yeah, because the disking is what's regenerating that weed growth. It's not just, it, you know, it's not just growing. Like if you just spray this and not disk it, yeah. you would get, this time of year, you'd hardly get any regrowth. You know, maybe a couple yeah. of annuals or whatever, but it wouldn't be near as much as when you start disturbing that seed bed, that's when you're sprouting new growth. Mm -hmm. Well, it's July 17th and uh, we're actually out here in my backyard, actually. I moved in here uh, earlier in the year and we're lucky enough to be on 60 acres. Most of it is tillable up on top of the ridge, just big cornfield and then there's some corn down below here. But uh, there is this little strip of timber basically on this side hill and uh, I think it's going to be a sweet little spot to hunt and we're actually just out here talking about a plot that we're thinking about putting in. It's not but a half an acre that we measured so it's not going to be crazy big but I think it's going to be a game changer as far as this area so. Yeah what I mean we're like 150 yards from your back door yeah. and Gavin and I have been talking about this spot for a number of weeks now but I hadn't seen it in person <clears throat> and one of the things about it is the access lane for the farmer too so when he goes and picks all the crops they're gonna be driving you know non-stop across this uh, when they harvest all this corn the combine the the tractors pulling the grain grain carts you know there's gonna be a lot of traffic running through here so you know your initial thought was to plant these little little side coasts mm -hmm. basically but that would have ended up maybe an eighth of an acre yeah and adding in the fact that it's going to get trampled on in right. September, October. Um, we decided that it might be better just to go ahead and if, if he can get permission from the landowner, plant this whole spot, which is pretty likely. Then we're getting closer to half an acre, uh, which is a little better size, especially considering a lot of it will get uh, run over. So it might might increase the, the holding power, which ultimately that's what you're trying to do keep these deer in and around where you can hunt them it's probably mostly a travel corridor yeah. not necessarily a bunch of deer living here but this could be the difference between you know more deer actually bedding on the property and being huntable as opposed to just having to be in the right spot at the right time when a buck cruises through mm -hmm. in november so um, that's kind of what we're looking at today it's a cool little spot um, i think it's got some some really good potential it's a spot that you know, a lot of people probably wouldn't have thought about planting a food plot just because of all the factors we just talked about. Yeah. But I think the fact that, that you are, it's gonna, it's gonna end up being a pretty cool spot to hunt. We were just talking about access and all that stuff. Gavin's gonna try to get it sprayed today. It's like you said, it's, we're working towards the latter half of July. So it's time to start getting these fall plots prepped. Uh, so we're gonna make the first step on this one spraying. This one has been mowed at least a couple of times, yeah. it looks like this summer. So. The weeds and canary grass and all that type of stuff is at a manageable height that I don't think it's worth mowing again. Uh, just go ahead and spray it today. Well, we got the area all sprayed off. Um, I think it's gonna turn out really good. Uh, we're gonna wait probably seven to ten days. We don't have any rain in the forecast, so we're gonna let it dry out good, uh, get a good kill and everything. Then we're either gonna come back in here and disc this or potentially burn it too. Just kind of gonna see what the best option is. My plan is to do some sort of brassicas in here, potentially do some clover as well, but definitely a fall type plot uh, in this location. Yeah, I would definitely throw some clover in here. Yeah. I, I mean, the way I look at it, there's usually no reason not to add some clover into yeah. that fall mix. You're not going to get a ton of it, but you'll get, it'll start getting established this fall, then come a lot better in the spring. Next and you know, who knows, you might be hunting turkeys out your, <laughs> your back door in the spring too. So um, definitely I would include some clover. But like, like Gavin said earlier, it's July 17th, so we're now in that window of opportunity to plant your fall brassica plots. Now that we've entered this latter half of July, at least here in the Midwest, the weather timing becomes more important than the calendar timing so the convenient thing for you is you can almost look at the rain cloud come in and come out and see yep. it um, but that's that's where i'm at too i'm trying to get all the fall plots prepped and ready to see before the next good rain unfortunately there's nothing in the forecast but that kind of gives us some time to get everything ready yeah. um, get a good kill on the plots and all that so 
Uh, that's kind of where we're at with the, the summer projects. But this whole theme of this episode has been, you know, just what we talked about, getting creative with little food plot locations, especially on permission properties. You see Max and Grant doing it in small spots that the farmer's not farming. Sometimes it's a cove that the farmer can't get the equipment into. In this case, is it's basically an access lane for the farmer. So the, especially on small properties, there are these spots that you normally wouldn't think of as as a spot you'd plant a food plot and that's kind of one of the the misconceptions of food plotting in general when i talk to people it seems like it's perceived as you know something that only land, big landowners do or you gotta have access to big equipment i mean heck i've planted almost six acres of soybeans this year just with a hand broadcaster you know you can do it with you know equipment such as this and small areas like this and the other thing too don't always think of food plots as just locations to hunt um, it can be more of a tactic to just keep deer in and around the spot that you can hunt them it, especially an area like this such a small property it adds another attraction factor and even if that attraction factor is just for does you know the more does you can get using this area the better your november is going to be obviously right. with bucks coming in here and checking cruising through um, so you know i, I always ch try to tell people that because i from my own experience, if I look back to all the bucks I've killed, very, very small percentage of them have been actually on a food source or a food plot. Um, but I still plant numerous food plots every year, either for myself or other people, uh, just because I want the hunting to be good in the area or on the property. So keep that in mind too um, with these food plots and think about you know maybe some creative spots like this uh, that you could put food on one of your properties. Moving forward, we'll continue to show you know some of our late summer work and show some of these plots that could become cool storylines, uh, but also the deer are starting to show up too. So I know we're all itching to get out and yeah. get filming over a soybean field somewhere. The deer have really started to hit the soybeans hard over the last couple of weeks, um, and this, we're entering in the time of year where they're going to become really, really visible. So. Uh, I know you're starting to get some deer on camera and, and so are a lot of our guys. So hopefully we'll be out velvet filming in the next few weeks. We appreciate you guys joining. We'll see you next Monday.